we have to be a little bit more careful in the future. So far, we presented a really nice story about Taylor expansion, but Taylor expansion doesn't always work out so well. Not all functions are as nice as the functions that we've been dealing with so far. Things can get weird, and even the manipulation that we have covered in this chapter, that can be a little deceptive. Now, we're going to take a quick look at this. We'll get back to it and cover it more in detail later. But for now, let's look at an example or two. For the first example, let's say that we tailor expand a trig function. I don't know. How about cosecant of x? Yeah, you know, we've done, we've done sine, we've done cosine. We haven't done that one yet. I wonder how this is going to go. Well, we could just use the definition. We know the definition for the Taylor series right now. So what do we got to do? We got to take our function, cosecant, got to take the derivative. Ooh, I'm not sure I remember. I think I memorized that once. What is that? It's, uh, oh yeah, minus cosecant times cotangent. Okay. But then I got to do the higher derivatives. We'll, we'll get to that and how to compute those things for now. Just trust me. The second derivative is cosecant times quantity cotangent squared plus cosecant squared. Now, all we got to do to get the first couple of terms in the Taylor expansion is just evaluate these guys at zero. And what do you think happens? Well, that doesn't work out so well. Because what? Uh, cosecant is one over sine. Sine of zero is zero. Can't divide by zero. Oops. Made a mistake there. And of course, cosecant is, is really bad at zero. So there's no way we're going to be approximating this with polynomials. Okay. Well, that's one way that things can go wrong. Your function can be bad at zero, but there are other ways. Consider the following example. Let's Taylor expand the function e to the cosine of x. Now, this looks a lot like an example that we've done already where everything worked out fine. And everything should work out fine. We know this series for cosine. It's totally good. We know the exponential series. That one is golden. No problems with derivatives blowing up or anything like that. Everything is going to be fine. So what do we do? e to the cosine of x is what? Well, I have to exponentiate cosine, but I know what cosine is. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Keep going, keep going. Okay, now I can take that series and substitute it into the exponential series. So what is, what is e to the anything? It's 1 plus that thing, which in this case is the cosine series, plus 1 over 2 factorial times the cosine series squared plus 1 over 3 factorial times that guy cubed. I'm going to keep going. Now, this is a little inconvenient because I have to take powers of this cosine series. But we've seen examples where we do that, right? I just pretend it's polynomial multiplication. And what am I going to do? I'm just going to multiply things out, focusing on the low degree terms. So all we need to do is take, I don't know, the first two or three terms of the exponential series, maybe, and group together all the terms of degree, I don't know, less than two or less than or equal to three or something like that. That's fine. Except it's not fine. And I'm going to leave it to you to investigate what goes wrong when you try to expand everything out, collect the lowest order terms, just by doing a finite amount of work. Now, this is a topic that we are going to revisit. We're going to talk in detail about why this last example has gone bad, but we're not going to do so right away.